Hello, I'm Elizabeth Luard, and welcome to Holland. These fertile fields were once salt marshes, pushed back and held by dikes like this one, which holds the Eiselmeer. These pastures, and the sea from which they were won, nurtures Europe's most resourceful nation. Officially, this is the Netherlands, a union of 11 provinces commonly known, even to the Dutch, as Holland. The canals serve as highways and recreation lanes, as well as drainage systems for the farmland. Most people have a boat, and to some, their boat is home. Elizabeth, how long have you lived on your houseboat? Uh, several years. I think uh, when the second uh, child was born, it's eight years we are living here. And before we were living here, we had a very small boat. Mm -hmm. And we had one child, and after the second, we had to move to a bigger one. So now we live in this one. And how many, of you, how many children now? We have three children, three girls. One eight-year-old, uh, seven-year, and three years old. And do they like living on a house? Yes, bed? they like it. And, Lisbeth, you have a family meal that you like to prepare, don't you? Yes, at this hut spot. It is onions, carrots and potatoes. You boil it, you mix it up. It is a quick meal. And meat? Does potatoes, meat? winter carrots and onions are the basics. The meat is a luxury. You wouldn't expect to have it every day. Chopped small. That is skirt of beef. So yes. it's quite tough. Yes. But very lean. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. And what about... And then we put it in a pan, with, also with water, and then also with uh, bay leaf. Bay leaf, yes. yes. And it stays in there, and afterwards you put it out. What, two or three? Yes. And then the rest? Then we uh, peel the potatoes. The meat stews gently in its own juices for four or five hours, until it's quite soft. When the children are home from school, they can help prepare the vegetables. It's much more fun than sound and water play and keeps them out of trouble. According to a 400-year-old legend, the hurt spot is really Spanish. The story goes that when the Dutch forces united under William of Orange to chase out Philip II's occupying army, the Spaniards were in such a hurry to leave, they left their dinner still simmering on the cooking fire. The Dutch claimed the contents of the pot along with the victory. And Lisbeth, do you have it all the year round, Hutspot? No, no, because it is too heavy eating it in spring. It's only when it is cold outside, and uh, then only you can uh, buy winter wortelen, winter carrots. Big fat winter carrots. Yes. yes. Lovely. Yes. Straining the gravy to go in with the carrots and onions. Now Dad comes in to put in a bit of muscle. You have to mash it all up together? Yes. And it's heavy work? Oh, a little bit. <laughs> I do it most of the times. This bit is cooking and I mix it up. The finishing touch. That's it. Vegetables cooked with the meat juices. Perfect for grown-ups and growing children on a cold day. Organizing enough space for the meat. A bit more of that lovely gravy to sauce the carrots and potatoes. Grace. That we the groot van en dat we gezond mogen. Vragen we om Jezus wil. Amen. Amen. Eet smakelijk. Eet smakelijk. Mag ik nog wat eten? Ja. Zeg maar eens, hier. Het was heerlijk. Heerlijk. <laughs> ik hoef niet meer. The Lord dealt the Dutch a difficult hand to play. If this landscape is man-made, man's ingenuity solved the problems. Holland is, and always has been, one of Europe's most advanced farming communities.
Even the wind, which sweeps uninterrupted across the flat fields, has been harnessed and put to work. Windmills, such as the Molander Hoop, used to mill flour for the whole community. The wheat conveniently barged in down the canal. Lovingly restored by Adrie Pireboom, the young miller, the mill wheels turn again, supplying a guild of bakers with fine stone ground flour for the daily bread making. Today we are milling wheat, and uh, it is a uh, hard type of wheat, and we do that because you get uh, a very good quality then of flour, and we're doing it always with this millstone because he's very suitable for it, and uh, well, it's, we're making long runs, so it's running the whole day on this product. We uh, sell flour, all the flour, to a, a group of bakers, which is a guild. And they make special bread of it. They, uh, they call it mill bread in, in many uh, variations, white and brown and uh, with more kinds of grain in it. And uh, well, it's all, all special. It's something exclusive. I've taken a painting break, but I'm being stalked by the rodent control officer. Every miller has a cat. She's a bit over keen to get into the picture. Go catch a mouse. You have to pass a state exam to run a windmill. It's a skilled business, trimming the sails and keeping everything shipshape. You have to look sharp. A blow to the head from a sail is easily got. It addles your brains. Then, say the Dutch, you're mill crazy. But maybe it's the products of this mill which make you mill crazy. Man cannot live by bread alone, he needs a little spirit. We're in the old trading port of Skidam, and this windmill, now only a symbol of its former glory, was used to grind the corn which made the mash for Holland's favorite tipple. Geneva gin, mother's ruin, whatever you care to call it, Dutch gin is the best, and none better than the products of this old family distillery. Carol Nolet, five times great-grandson of the founder, has invited me to look round. He still reckons he's a bit of a trainee, and so we have the manager, Mr. Pim Creek, to keep an eye on us. Stoking up kettle one, the big copper boiler, the oldest in Holland, which still distills the pride of the Nolet family. I'm expecting a nip of herb flavored gin. Would you like a sandwich? Place some milk. And no gin? Gin. We don't have gin at lunch now. Really? We drink milk. I said, well, it's a good foundation, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think milk is as typical as gin or for. for Almost. Milk? Yes? Almost. And, Carol, this is a family business, isn't it? That's right. It's owned for 300 years by the same family, my family, no that family. It's going on still from father to son, father to son. I'm right now the 11th generation. Hopefully I'll take over after my father retires. And you don't know the recipe, do you? Yes, we have a formula. It's a family recipe, so-called, and it's kept real safe in my daddy's safe upstairs. And he only knows it right now. I'm not, he didn't tell me yet, but hopefully he will someday. Is it spices? Is it herbs? It is herbs. It is mostly herbs. Yes. Yeah. Because there are 14 of it. 14 herbs? Yes, but that's all I know. And it's the combination which is. It is a combination. And how many distilleries in this area? There were almost 400. Now there are only five in Skidam. Small ones, or are you. You are a small distillery? We are a, more or less a small one, yeah. You had, you had ships of your own, didn't you? Yeah, in the Middle Ages, around 1700, about that uh, age, um, then we had ships, three or four, and they were going all over the world. Exporting your gin? Mainly exporting, and then after we brought our gin to whatever place, we took some in, we brought it back. Trade and ships, the lifeblood of the Dutch. Hoorn was the headquarters of the East India Company. Holland's fortunes, 
and this is one of Europe's most prosperous nations, were founded on small beginnings. These sturdy wooden boats still trawl the icy northern waters for the fish which brings a gleam to any Dutchman's eye, the herring. These ports were ice-bound, and until the ice flows broke up in the spring, the herring fleets couldn't get out and fish. And when they came back, it was with the new herring. And the citizens will go down to the quayside and have their own roar from the kiosks. And I think I'm going to go and try one. New herring. New herring. New herring. Specialty from Holland. Ah. From the North Sea. From the North Sea, yes. Salt water fish. That's from the North Sea. Uh -huh. Did the fleets go from here ever? From here, uh, in, in uh, former days, they catch here uh, herring in the IJsselmeer. Yes. But that's for 50 years. 50 years ago. These days, health regulations require herring to be eaten raw, has to be frozen for 24 hours, which effectively pasteurizes the fish. Uh -huh. And then you have to eat it. <laughs> Chew and swallow. But you will, you will take out the bone for me. I take out the bone. I let, uh, I make one for you, especially for you. Okay. A nice one. <laughs> so you remove the, the guts. Uh -huh. After that, you remove the skin from the herring. Uh -huh. Like this. Shows easier than this. Mm -hmm. After that, you remove the bones. And the little bones. Then he's ready to, to use. So you take some pickle, uh, some gherkin, and onions, a delicious herring. So I eat it just like that? You eat it like that. What? You take it by the tail. And I put honey. Put onions on it. Like this? Just like that. Up in, in the air? In, 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 up in the air. All in one go? All in one go. I shall, I shall do some for you. Yeah? You will demonstrate. You make it like this, uh -huh. and like this. And that's it. Mmm. It's nice. Mmm. Eh? Mmm. Love it. The Dutch will tell you, and they're only half joking, that Amsterdam, and maybe these handsome houses as well, was built on a foundation of herring bones. During the Middle Ages, people feasted on the new herring. For rich and poor alike, herring, smoked, salt or fresh, was the great bastion against famine. And of course, the approved food during Lent, when there wasn't much else around. During the 19th century, the shift to industrialization and the move to the towns made high yield farms necessary. Landless workers needed food, and the Dutch adapted their production methods accordingly. Cooperatives like this one near Hauda were established. By 1900, while most of Europe was still hand milking its family cow for its own needs, an English traveler was able to admire the efficiency of Holland's dairy farmers. He wrote, all over Holland, the cows are good and there is milk, butter and cheese in abundance at the markets, as nearly all the milk is sent to the butter and cheese factories. So it's Draining the curd. The basic method is the same, but every cheesemaker has his refinements. Today we're making a batch of nettle cheese. And Kes, what is what are we going to put in today? Well, this is about 90% needle cheese, so we call it. But there's a little bit uh, other things in, like celery and garlic, a little bit uh, onion, uh, petersilie, parsley. how do you call that? Parsley, parsley, yes. 
and garlic. And garlic. That's about 10%. And that was very healthy. Yes, the, the needles are very healthy, you know. That's why people want to eat needle cheese. And you made it in soup sometimes in the old days, perhaps? Yeah. We make it twice a week, I think, nearly. Yes? Yes. Right. So we put it in? Yes. Yes, open it. Nettles were much appreciated by medieval housewives. They were the first edible greens to appear in the spring and reckoned to be blood cleansing. Cutting the curd, the size of the pieces dictates the final texture of the cheese. Square peg into round hole does go. Brining the cheese, a good wallow in a bath of salty water for flavor and conservation. Training up the next generation, painting the waxy coating on the cheese is all part of the cooperative tradition. The wax is also used for candle making. And the candles of Hauda are almost as famous as the cheese. Neighboring nations call the Dutch cheese heads. Can't think why. Gerd has volunteered to show me how to make a spice cake. And naturally, I brought not only flour from the windmill, but also a bunch of spring flowers. No one would dream of visiting a Dutch friend without taking flowers, preferably tulips. And more flour to make a cake. Thank you, thank you, nice. So, what are we going to make? We're going to make a kruidkoek. And kruidkoek spice cake. Kruidkoek, you call it spice cake. And kraut means spice? Spice and cake. Cook is like cake. Is it actually cake or something a bit different? No, it's a little bit uh, stronger, I think. Yes? Yes. So what are the ingredients? Uh, we have 350 grams of flour. Self-raising flour. In a you have this, you make this very regularly, don't you? Yes, nearly every week. Yes? Yes. 350 grams brown, dark brown sugar. It's very easy to set one egg. Five spoons of kuchkruiden, which is spoons? a mixture oh. of spices. Mixture of spice, spices, yes. What are the spices? Four, five. Uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon. Uh, what, what, how do we call it? Kruisnagel. Uh, cloves, no. cloves, uh, and uh, anise, anise, yes, um, anise seed, and what's uh, the other one? Ginger, uh, ginger, yes, ginger. and that's it. Yes, that's it. Easy. And then we need two and a half hundred centiliter of milk. Do you usually measure? I don't know what that is. Do you usually just pour it straight in? Yes, normally I do it on my own when you, you I know see it. how it is, yes? And there, the mixer. You see how nice it is? And this, in a brown mud. Yes, sir. <laughs> so. Now I'll put this. Didn't I do it right then? Oh, you forgot this piece. Because there's a lot of sugar in it, it's very mm -hmm. important. You do it a very good. So, and now. Now, what's that? That is uh, bread crumbs. Bread crumbs. Crumbs, yes. So it doesn't stick. That works very good. Yeah. Better than flour? Yes, uh -huh. much more better. Oh, now I get to pour it in. Maybe you better use this. 
Okay. You want to do it? Okay. It's probably the easiest cake ever, isn't it? It's very easy. <laughs> You're ready in a few minutes. So now we put it in the oven for 50 or 60 minutes, about that. This avenue of poplars is the raw material of Holland's traditional footwear, clogs. Practical, water resistant and tough, rather like the Dutch themselves. Clogs are still in demand today, particularly among factory workers and those who work the land. So much so that production is now automated, not exactly mass produced, more a speeding up from the old way of hand carving. There's still plenty of skill involved. I've always wanted a pair of clogs. Not these, they're for men only. The ones for ladies are lower cut and have a leather strap. It has to be fixed to suit the wearer, if it's to be comfortable. Cinderella never had a pair like this. There's a good market for clogs at Alton. <laughs> and your hat, who makes your, your hats? Do you make your own hats? Yes, in uh, our group uh, there are uh, one or two uh, women who uh, make, uh, make them clean. This is one part and this also. It's beautiful lace, yes. isn't it? Yes. Beautiful workmanship. Such care in the embroidering and the pleating of the linen. It's a very long uh, piece of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like the old portraits of those handsome Dutch burghers and their wives in their yes, stiff white uh, ruffs. Yes, yeah. yeah. You can feel it. And a wire to hold it. Yes. It's very, you can feel it's very stiff. Herod, what built the dance out? The dance die gaat dus, gaat dus over uh, een pot met bonen. En de dansers hebben dus de keus om... Uh, Ze kiezen tussen een pot met bonen of dansen. En ze kiezen dus voor de, de dans. So that's the brown bean song. And now let's find out how to make this famous dish. Please. Elisabeth, dit is Riet. Dag, Elisabeth. Elisabeth, dit is Wilhelmine. Wilhelmina is going to show me how to make brown beans with sour Wilhelmine milk sauce. Show me how to cook. Yeah. Yeah. A nice fresh apron. Die bonen zetten we je nacht in het water. Ja. En dan de andere morgen doen ze met hetzelfde water op de kachel zetten. Bacon chopped with a few thick slices too, and fried till its fat runs. Zo. Flour is mixed with the sour milk to make the sauce. The chopped onions are cooked in the bacon fat. The beans were soaked overnight, then drained and cooked in fresh water for three or four hours until they're quite tender. Nice floury boiled potatoes. The bacon slices are brown and ready. The chopped bacon and onion goes into the sauce. And we're ready to serve it up. That's it in speck. Ah, in speck. Brune bonen met kennemelkse saus. Dank u wel.
a fine meal to restore everyone's energies. I'm let off the dancing just so long as I keep sketching. And my audience doesn't seem to mind if I'm not Rembrandt. Yeah. <laughs>